Hello and welcome to episode 3 of the Grand Mage Tutorials videos. This one's going to be a bit different, it's going to be fairly short, and it's only addressing some questions that I've had recently regarding connecting MA to MA3D. So today we're going to go through MA2, which I've got open, and I'll also connect MA1, because it is a bit tricky to do if you haven't done it before. So the first thing you do is you open up both applications. Um, if you haven't opened up Grand MA2, it'll probably prompt you with a couple of questions, asking you to accept its usage agreement and stuff. But once you've got them both installed, then you've got to connect the two of them together. And the situation I'm covering here is that you've got one computer, so you're only using a local interface. I'll also cover if you've got two computers, uh, but I won't be able to replicate that because I can't screen record on two computers, but I can show you basically how to do it. So, let's begin. So the first thing you need to understand is that GrandMA 3D and GrandMA, all GrandMA products have what's called a streaming version. So every time there's an update that's released for, say, GrandMA 2, uh, they'll, sometimes the upgrade will cut support for Grand MA 3D, which means you need to download a newer version. The easiest way to tell with that is to check what the application says. So the application we're talking about here is uh, Grand MA 3D. So I wonder if you can see that. You can. Cool. So here I've got Grand MA 3D and you'll see the numbers after it are 2.4 and 6.6. So that means that this GrandMA 3D version will run with GrandMA 2 version, streaming version 2.4.3 and GrandMA 1 streaming version 6.6. .6. So it'll work. The best trick is if you're having issues with either product, download the latest versions of both. And if that doesn't work, uninstall the old versions, download the new versions, install those and see if they work. And if you've still got issues, uh, email me, which some of you have. I'm not sure how you found my email address, but okay. Anyway, we're two and a half minutes in and I haven't actually shown you anything. So, let's begin. So, first I'll cover MA3D. So, I'll open this up a bit more so you can see the interface a bit more. So, across the top, we've got the File button, which is very important, because there's a button that's not normally found, which is Restart in Grand MA1 Network. Now, MA3D normally defaultly ships in MA2 mode enabled. So if you're having trouble connecting to MA1 mode, this will be why. But for this, this is exactly what we want. So down the bottom, connection state. Oh, you can't actually see that. Hang on. Bring that up a bit. Uh, connection state, standalone. So we select that and we see that there's one session available, which is the one that I'm running in MA3, uh, MA2 back there. But across the top, we have the option to create a session, invite a session, username, and a bunch of other stuff. The one we're focusing on here is own IP address. So in this case, the way I've got these two set up is you can see that this is an external IP address, which means if I was running multiple computers with GrandMA2, that would be the IP address I'd set it to. But for localized stuff where you're just dealing with the local PC, so GrandMA and GrandMA 3D running on the same computer, you need to set that IP address to local only, which is 127.0.0.1, which is just a local IP. So if you do that, all the traffic will run internally in your computer and it also won't kill your network. So to do that, we will set both to that IP address and it'll ask me to restart that. And we'll pause this video while I restart. Oh, in fact, let's not. You can see my hideous background of unorganization and stuff. So once we've set that, we close both applications. Uh, we won't save the show. And we'll open 3D up again. And we'll see, hopefully down the bottom, that the IP address has changed. Go MA3D. Yep, we can see that the IP address has changed, and it's also got my host name of this computer. So that's ready, and we'll see that we've got no sessions available. So we'll do the same in GrandMA2. So GrandMA2, if you haven't used GrandMA2, learn GrandMA1 first. 
because Grand MA2 gets a bit confusing, and there aren't too many Grand MA2 consoles out there, and you can run your Grand MA2 in Series 1 mode. But, yeah, I'd hope that if you were standing in front of a console, you knew a bit more than these tutorials have taught you so far. But anyway, so, like on Grand MA1, we go Setup, and we go Network, and we go Network Control, and we leave the session. You have to leave the session or stop the session before you can change IP addresses. And then where it says Station IP, we change that to our internal IP address. And it'll say changes will be required when you restart. So we restart. So we close that. We close that. Save. And we open Grand MA2, which is that one. Okay, so we've changed the IP addresses, but you'll notice that in sessions in MA3D, nothing has come up. The issue will be is because we haven't started the session, nothing will appear. So we get click Start or Join Session, and we can see the session appears there, and the session has also appeared in Grand MA2. So we'll go into Grand MA2, and we'll join the session, and it'll prompt me, do I want to save a blank show? We say no. So, as it turns out, I was unable to connect to that session, which has actually given me a fantastic opportunity to show you the incompatibilities. So, if I try to connect to that session in MA3D, uh, we'll leave this one I've created, it prompts me to load, but then nothing happens. So, we see nothing happens. The reason is, my Grand MA3D is too old for the Grand MA2, um, which is alright. So, the way that you can test that is to check the numbers at the top, and we see that this one is, does it tell me, if we go info, it says desk series 2, streaming 2.4, and the latest version of on PC for uh, Grand MA2 is 2.5. So the way of telling whether they are compatible is via those numbers, or if you create a session in 3D, when you go to check for sessions in MA2, it flags it as red, which indicates that it can't connect, it's detected the session, but it can't connect due to a issue with networking, or that the streaming version is too old. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to pause the studio and wait for the update to download, and then I'll come back to it. But there you go, that's what an invalid session looks like. Okay, and we're back. Uh, and to you it may seem like five seconds, to me it was five seconds, oh, well, about ten minutes, uh, in which I downloaded and installed the new version of MA3D, and also removed some old versions of MA2. So, we've opened up the new application, and because I'm running Windows 7, it's prompted me and asked me, would I like to allow this application to be able to talk to other networks? And we definitely want to say, allow access, because this could be another reason why you couldn't connect. If you say cancel, it'll isolate Grand MA 3D, and it won't be able to talk to anything. So, yay for Windows 7 and its firewalls. So, we'll open that up. And we'll resize this window so you can kind of see both. And we'll see that the show is there, all our IP addresses are the same, so we'll click join. And now the show should load. Yep, so it's downloading the show file. Bringing all the objects across, and now we've loaded the show. And we can see that this is the show file I'm working on. Uh, I had a couple of questions from some people about rendering settings. What do they all do? Uh, I'll make random a 3D full size for you. And close our connection window. So, this is the show I'm working on. Just messing around, learning MA2. But, our rendering menu. Same in MA3D 2 mode as it is in MA1 mode. You've got ambient flare, which just adds more light, so if you've got a lot of pink light, it'll light up the room pink, 
Uh, beam dilution type, something that really kills PCs if you're running them at 100% or correct. That basically determines whether over distance beams should dilute properly your beam quality, which is sort of self-explanatory. Um, beam type, whether you just want it to be no beam and only have the the spots, or simple where it's just beams, no gobos or gobos, or shadow, or shadow and gobo. And then you've obviously got beam intensity. Beam intensity is really not something you want to mess with. Because if you set beam intensity to 500, your 250s look like they're 250Ks and yeah. So I'll set that back to 100, 108, there we go. Spot type, same as beam type, but just for the spots. Spot intensity, point light color is the added light in the room. So while you're setting up your room, you might want to run that at 100% so you can see everything. But then when you're programming, you turn that off. That's like running house lights. Background color is stuff that's not your set. Ambient color. Basically the same as point light color. And then you've got bloom, which just makes them look kind of cool. I don't know. Something you might want to do in your final renders. Okay, so that's connecting with MA2. Let's do MA1 now. So we'll close MA2. Uh, did I make any changes? No. So, we go File, Restart with Grand MA1 Network. It says the application will now be restarted and switched into MA1. Would you like to save the show? No. So that's going to reboot, and I will locate MA1 mode. Well, MA1, really. Uh, which is there? MA1 on PC. Yep, we'll load whatever the last show was, probably the demo show. No, actually, I've been playing with it since then. So we'll drag that across, and that looks fairly good for you. Bring that down, and I don't know. Oh, probably not. Cool, alright. So, same as last time. If you click on Connection State Unknown, it brings up your network window. Same IP address settings, and we can see that the show is present. If it's not present, we check under Setup, Setup, Tools, MA Network Configuration, and we check that we're running a session and the IP address is right. So that's where you set your IP address. It's not as self-explanatory as MA2, but you want to use your local IP address. Once that's done, you start your session, and you join your show. And there you go. It looks like a demo show that I have at some point run. And there you go. That's the connection demo and setup for MA1 and MA2. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. A proper one should be back when I get some more time, but I thought I'd record this 13-minute video to show you how to connect. Hopefully it's been helpful. If not, um, email me. I'll find a proper email address for you because I don't respond to the one that you keep finding me on. So I'll set up a proper one at some point. Uh, but feel free to leave comments, like this video, do all that kind of stuff, share it, and yeah, send me questions in the comments or via private messages or via email if you're that much of a stalker. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.